Hello, welcome to this video. So chances are you're here because you've heard about how toxic these store-bought sun creams are and you would like to make your own homemade alternative. And good for you, let's get to it. Okay, so bench time. The first thing that you're going to need is a double boiler, like this one. So, well, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I don't actually own a double boiler. So what that is, is two bowls that fit perfectly in each other. And so I've just got a saucepan and this bowl, and actually it works great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting all of our ingredients into this bowl and it's gonna be heated. So you're gonna have this on the hob and as the water's boiling, all of the ingredients are gonna be melting together. So the first ingredient that you're going to need is a unrefined raw, cold pressed extra virgin coconut oil. <laughs> now that's a mouthful and a lot of qualifiers. And really the truth is you should be looking for that in every plant-based oil that you buy. So extra virgin just means the first pressed of the coconut. So it's the finest quality oil. The coconut is pressed multiple times after that and it just decreases in its oil value every single time. So that's one. Then you're going to need avocado oil, again, same qualifiers, and we're also going to need a quarter cup of shea butter. So actually I've got shea butter here, which I bought from the soapery. I'll, I'll put all the links below to all the products I use so that you can find the same ones. Um, I really try to find the best quality and also the best value. And then you're going to need beeswax. Mine comes in a big wad like this, and also my shea butter comes in big wads as well. So when we come to do the recipe, don't worry if it's not exact, just measure out the hunks as best you can. And then you also are going to need non-nano zinc oxide. So all natural and what the heck is this? <laughs> so this is actually a mineral. It's, um, it's much better than, than the chemicals that you'll find in the standard sun creams. But this is yet what makes it SPF. So the first thing to say about SPF is there isn't an exact science to this. So Sophie from My Gorgeously Green Life, she has it first hand from inside formulators who create sun creams for you know the personal brands that we that we buy in the store, that it isn't an exact science. They just they do it as best they can to judge what the SPF is. And it's the same with this recipe here. There isn't an exact SPF. But also there are so many women who use this recipe for years and for years and have had great results with it. So I always say, do your own research, be informed. The second thing is when we're out in the sun, our skin is absorbing UVA rays and also UVB rays. So plant-based fatty oils such as these, they cannot block out UVA rays, but some studies have shown that certain oils can block out UVB rays. So hence why we're using this, but also the non-nano zinc oxide is what's gonna be providing you SPF from UVA rays. When you buy zinc oxide, it's very important to get non-nano. Non-nano means that it doesn't absorb into your skin and into your bloodstream. It's gonna sit on the top of your skin. And then also paired with the beeswax, that's gonna make it waterproof. I don't know if you've heard of the recent boom in popularity that has happened with carrot seed oil and also red raspberry seed oil. So they are a plant-based fatty oil and there are many people and many studies claiming that red raspberry seed oil has an SPF between 28 and 50 and carrot seed oil has an SPF between 38 and 40. So there are studies that say that, but also if you look into the study, it's also that those things have been paired with other ingredients so you know it's not something that you can particularly again say is an absolute but it certainly gives the impression that those oils can contain some SPF again always just look into it always be informed because some people have just used those plant-based oils by themselves and have found that it hasn't been very effective and then finally and this is completely optional you can also add in some essential oils so I have got frankincense Oh, clear a little space here. And also lavender. And basically putting these into the mix is mainly for scent, but also because many essential oils are really fantastic for your skin. And frankincense and lavender are perfect examples of some that your skin loves. So for me, I don't enjoy the scent of shea butter. I find it very strong, so I'm gonna be putting in, in these two. And if you would like to put these essential oils into your mix, you can use between 10 to 20 drops in this mix we've got here today. Also use different essential oils that you'd prefer for their scent. 
really important note, and this is so, so key. Please do not use citrus essential oils ever out in the sun because citrus oils are photosensitive, which means that if you are out in the sun with them, you're actually going to give yourself sunburn. So definitely avoid those, but these ones are safe. So now we've got the background, now we've got the science, let's get into actually making the product. So I might just clear myself a little space here. <laughs> Okay, so first product of the lineup to go into our double boiler is the shear butter. So again, as I said before, they come in hunks and chunks. So just do your best to measure out a quarter cup. And if you can see that, there you go. So that goes in or not. <laughs> then we're going to put a half a cup of the avocado oil. I'm definitely not going to administer that with this. <laughs> so 100 millilitres of avocado oil equals half a cup. That's satisfying. A quarter cup of beeswax, which, oh look at that. I already got my hunk off with a meat cleaver earlier, so this is gonna take a while to liquefy for sure. And then you're going to need a quarter cup of your unrefined coconut oil. Now, because I've been boiling bones, my bone broth in the kitchen for two days, mine has turned to liquid, which is amazing. Makes it so much easier to measure out. Yours will be hard, probably. Don't worry. Ooh. Such a musician at heart. So at this point we are going to move this to the kitchen and put this onto the heat. So we're going to be um, putting water into our saucepan, popping this on top, bringing the water to a boil whilst this is on top and it's all going to melt together. It's going to be amazing. But also whilst this water has boiled, we're actually going to take our cute little container that we're going to store it in after it's finished. and. It's very important that we sterilise this before we use it and you do that by placing your glass container into boiling water for a couple of minutes and submerging it, completely submerging it, bringing it back out, letting it dry, you're all good to go. So let's get to it, this way. So you can hear that this is coming to the boil. I filled it quite full with water and I'm about to put the bowl on top. And then we watch as those ingredients over time just start to melt in. If you've got a big hunk of beeswax as I have, it's going to take a while, so you are going to need to be poking around in there with your spatula. All the ingredients have melted together, the shea butter's melted in, and the beeswax has got smaller, but I don't want to heat this for too long, and so I've just taken this out and I'm going to just chop it a little bit smaller. In they go. And they should dissolve a lot quicker. I'm also going to turn the heat down a bit because it's been on for so long now that I'm going to just pop this down to medium-high heat. They're almost gone now. At this point I'm going to turn it off and just allow them to um, sit in what's left and just dissolve themselves. And we're back. So it took about 10 minutes for the beeswax to actually fully dissolve in the mixture and then once you've set it to the side you can leave it for a few hours for it to cool or you can pop it in the fridge because it's quicker. So guess what I did? <laughs> and here it is. Voila! So the reason why you want to leave it set aside to cool is because we have a few more ingredients that we need to add into this mixture and it needs for it to not be too hot to add them, i.e. the zinc oxide and the essential oils. But if you leave it too long on the side, if you leave it in the fridge too long, the beeswax is gonna to start to set again. So it's just leaving it long enough for the mixture to cool down. Already, I mean, I can, you can maybe start to see that this has, around the edges, started to form again. So just keep an eye on it. I probably kept mine in the fridge for just under 10 minutes. So at this stage, we're gonna put in the zinc oxide. So you're gonna need, again, a quarter of a cup. Mm -hmm. 
mix as you go. You might want to use a whisk, I'm just using a fork. You might even need to just use the sides of the bowl itself to just push some of the clumps against to just dissolve them because it does start to go a little clumpy which is why you do need to really be whisking and just feathering this in when you can sometimes it does go a bit lumpy so now we're going to add in the essential oils i'm going to put 10 of each in here and mix them in The great thing about this mixture is I'm making this right now at the beginning of spring. This mixture is going to last me spring and summer. So you just need to make one batch when spring comes around. It smells great. So now you can go ahead and put it into your container. And so once you've poured it in, and by the way, it's super cute. So this just needs to set for a few hours and it's just gonna turn into a bit of a cream and then you can pop it in your bag, take it on the go or keep it in your house, whatever you prefer. The important thing to note with any sun cream, but I would also just note with this sun cream is you need to be applying sun cream every two hours. So, you know, as with all sun cream, even though this is waterproof because of the beeswax, you know, you do need to be reapplying because over time it does wear off. So enjoy your non-toxic DIY sun cream. Let me know in the comments if you make your own. Don't forget that I make videos every week on healthy habits and lifestyle tips. You know, I would love nothing more than to help you live a toxic free life. So if you want to have more of these healthy habits and lifestyle tips, then do click the subscribe button below. If you would like to see these videos sooner, press the little notification bell for a ding-a-ling whenever I'm live. Bye! Oh P.S. I forgot. So if you want to put the rest of your mixture into a roll-on, then you could take an old glue stick like this one, and I've put some of this tape around it just to make it a fancy colour, and you could pour your liquid sunscreen in before it dries and so this will just fill up and then you can have this as a handy on the go just to, to rub it in. The other thing to note is that this sun cream does give a slight white hue. I am actually wearing it right now. I've rubbed it in and I mean I think it makes my skin look really healthy. I've got a real glow going on but I put some on my back as well. I don't know if you can see it's just just a little bit. You would need like quite a lot of rubbing in but I would much rather have that than and the peace of mind of knowing I've got something good on my body whilst having some protection, then put all of the toxins that are in standard sunscreens on my skin. I hope you agree. Really, really this time, I am leaving. Okay, lots of love, bye.